let me show you this is something I'm guilty of and, I, and I've stopped myself doing it because it's fine for the video call but then when someone rings the doorbell there's a problem this looking good has anyone else done this hey everyone bit of a different video today I normally talk about fashion and designer bags and I am actually including those in this video but specifically I want to share with you how I'm getting dressed for work at the moment, where I'm buying my clothes from, and how, and specifically in regards to, to working from home, how I'm getting dressed and some tips on if you're doing video calls, things that really work for me, so that when you're on the call, you look okay. I'm gonna briefly cover what I do for a living so that for anyone who's new, you can get the gist of it because you might, you. It will, I think it will just help you to understand what I'm going to show you that I wear. Because what I, what I wear is fairly formal. Okay, so my day-to-day -day job is I'm a marketing consultant and I've always worked in marketing all the time back to pretty much when I came out of university. That's always kind of been what I do. I now work from home. So up until five years ago, I always worked for agencies. Now I work from home. Working from home, you've got to be really routine, really military with it. It's really easy to slip out of um, out of a routine. And the thing that keeps me going is knowing I have to pay the bills. <laughs> it's a very good thing to keep you working. But when it comes to how I'm dressing, when I was working in an office, every single day I was putting together a different outfit. Since working from home, that's changed because I don't need to be so formal, but I quite like being formal on certain days. Typical things that I will wear are things that you can see here. So normally a sort of blouse or a top, anything that's smart, normally something that covers the arms, not always. Um, it's just kind of what I quite like or you know just like a cap sleeve like this uh, sometimes I might wear a blazer jacket but for me I don't like to be too corporate because it's not really I work with corporate clients but I don't work in a corporate environment so and I never have I've always worked in a creative environment and in fact if I went to a meeting to see one of my um, clients in a corporate environment and I was there in a suit they'd be a bit like are you feeling okay? What's that about? So I always wear, I always dress smartly, but not too uh, formally. The other thing that's really working for me, and for any of you who wrote to me a couple of months ago when lockdown first happened and everyone was freaking out because it was really scary and you were saying, I've got nice clothes, I've got nice bags, and now it all seems completely pointless because, you know, it's one thing not leaving your house, it's another thing being told you can't leave your house and it did really feel scary. And when a lot of you were saying that about clothes and bags and how pointless it all was at the time, I, I, I felt the same way, I felt the same way. If you are still self-isolating or you're just not going out that much because when you do go out it feels quite stressful, things I've been doing that have let me enjoy the clothes that I've got and the bags that I've got, I am actually wearing them. Before, I wouldn't necessarily wear them. So for example, this blazer that I'm showing you here, it's it's just a deal blazer, but, and although it looks quite formal, I like to try and make it look a, um, formal, but kind of not too formal by not wearing a, um, a collared shirt with it and wearing this necklace here, which is actually by Elle Florence. Um, she's a YouTuber and I will link to her below but I feel like this kind of lariat style necklace it still looks still looks cool, but it look, adds like an edginess to it. Also with my bags, I've spoken in the past that when it comes to work, I don't tend to use luxury items. With the Dior blazer, it doesn't have Dior written all over it and somebody wouldn't necessarily know. So I feel that that I can get away with, but when it comes to designer bags, I don't use designer bags for work. Um, and I know there have been lots of you in, in different countries actually saying, well, in my country, I think one of you was saying that in Switzerland, if you go to work glammed up in designer items that it makes you look like you're doing really well in life. And actually when it comes to promotions, it can put you in, in a better light for getting it. Um, I don't know how other people in the UK have found it, but I've just had a couple of experiences where um, 
really just kind of minor designer things that I've worn um, or even not worn. I had an incident years ago with, uh, I, w I had like a River Island bag or something and I just bought my first deal wallet and my bag was on the floor and the wallet was probably on the top. Anyway, it was slightly visible and somebody who was senior to me made a comment about it and it was kind of a sarcastic comment and then that comment never stopped. It went on weeks and months and it, ju it just made me realize that obviously to some people that kind of rubs them up the wrong way. Hey everyone, so I'm just editing this and I feel like it sounds like I'm kowtowing a bit to opinion. And I suppose in a way I am, but what I'm really trying to say is that I've learned from those few past experiences and I'm, I'm choosing not to wear luxury to work, to benefit me, to gain for me. Because there have been some things in the past um, that I've even known of actually with colleagues, fellow colleagues, that when it's come to uh, pay rises, promotions, that it's, you know, it's kind of assumed, oh, well, you've got the £4,000 Chanel bag, you don't need any more money. And it shouldn't happen. And I don't always think it's conscious, but it can happen. Um, and plus as well, I wouldn't feel good going in to uh, try and pick up some new work with a £4,000 bag. So that's really why I do it. And you never know somebody else's situation. This is just me though. I know some of you are, are kind of like, screw that, I'm gonna wear what I want. Um, but this is personally why I choose not to. So I've got like a whole other load of bags that I use to work that aren't logoed up, but they're really good quality and they look really smart. So you, you still look like you're doing well in life. You're the kind of person that somebody would want to work with, but you're just not too, too in their face. But let me know what you think about that. I know a lot of you were quite divided on it. But because I'm working from home, I'm making a point of using my bags because no one can see them. So every morning when I get dressed, I put my wallet and things in a different bag and I walk to my desk and I put it on the desk next to me. I normally use my wallet in the day anyway to pay for stuff. So I need it. It's not like I'm, it's not like I don't need it. And again, it just kind of reinforces this. I'm going to work now, even though I'm going to go and work in a room in my house. I like to buy my work clothes from Reese, from, uh, where are these trousers from? Claudie Perlo, they do really good clothes and their clothes are really good actually for work to weekend. They've, they've kind of got the balance right there. Um, I also have bought clothes, a lot of clothes from Karen Millen. This shirt, for example, is from 2017 Karen Millen. Before the Boohoo takeover, I, in my opinion, I really think Karen Millen is one to be avoided now because I've bought from it recently and they've managed to keep the designs that, that everything looks original Karen Millen, but the quality is terrible. Anyway, they're kind of the places where I tend to shop from. And what I do with the things that I have for work is I buy things that are good quality and that I'm not having to replace them constantly. So the stuff that I'm showing you here is actually quite old. I don't, none of the clothes that I use for work are fresh, brand new things. I just buy quality. And I buy things where there's a colour palette, where it all mixes in, because normally when I get dressed, it's early in the morning, and I don't really want to think too hard about things that work with each other. I just want to be able to know that I can pull out a shirt or a top or a skirt or a pair of trousers and that they're going to kind of match together. I normally, I have actually got work trousers on at the moment, but they're loose. I quite like a looser trouser I'm finding when I'm working from home. If I'm not going to wear a suit trouser, then I will wear um, a smart jogging bottom, kind of a loose fit trouser. Something that's made out of a soft, comfortable fabric, but I can open the front door in it. I'm not kind of wearing a suit jacket on the top and then some scruffy Adidas trousers on the bottom, which looks really weird, even though it's tempting to do that, isn't it? Because then when you're on a video call, no one knows. The final thing, how to look good when you're doing a video call. Has anyone had that? You started doing lots of video calls and the cameras on laptops and stuff, they are like the worst. And if, you're, if the lighting's bad, it makes you look ways that you hope to God you don't really look. Well, I've got some tips that really work for me. The first thing is pay attention to your background. <laughs> it's one thing I didn't do at one point. So I've been having a lot more video calls. I probably, 
before all of this situation, I realise now in retrospect, I was spending way too much time on the road going to see different clients. And you'd go out to a meeting, it would take you an hour to get there, the meeting would be an hour, then an hour to get home. Before you knew it, half the day had gone and you didn't actually have the time to get the work done that you discussed in the meeting. Now, what with video calling, it's become a lot quicker to get things done, to get things signed off, and the whole thing feels a lot more streamlined. And it lets you kind of be a bit smarter with your time. Pay attention to the background in your room. You would be amazed. In, in my office at one point, probably it's like this again now, but I had all papers piled up behind me and I got on a call one day and I looked, I, it was too late, the meeting had started. And it's like all these papers were piled up in the back and I think on one call that I had, my blooming vision board was in the background and I couldn't get out to move it. I mean, there was, there's nothing written on it bad. It's just like a bathroom that I want in my life one day and you know, um, stuff like that, uh, targets and things. But I remember it was in the background and I thought I really should have thought about the background before I did this call. Lighting and, and in terms of how you look, Ca the, these cameras on these devices most of the time are awful and the perspective, particularly on the iPhone, I've noticed on the Samsung, the perspective is perfect, so you actually look quite good. On the iPhone, the front facing camera is awful, it makes like your forehead look bigger than your chin and it, you know, like the, it warps almost and can make you look quite gross, I feel. So things that I do are this, lighting. Sit in front of an open window if you can. Artificial light tends to kind of create shadows and it can make you look a funny color and it can make the background look really dull. If you can sit your computer or your phone or your iPad or whatever you're using, if you can sit it in a window and then sit with the window in front of you, it will help to minimize any shadows on your face, make you look brighter, but also it lets you be seen a lot clearer. The other thing is when you're on a video call, if at all possible, try and angle your camera so that you very slightly look upwards at the camera. And what this does is it lifts your face. You, you would be surprised, but if, if you have your computer down on a ledge and you're like looking down, that's when you can start to, you know, see any shadows around your face and you can look heavier in this area. Whereas when you position your laptop slightly higher up, it just lifts everything. Um, one, I don't actually have this item I'm gonna show you for that reason, but I actually use one of these stands with my computer. And I actually bought this years ago off Amazon. The reason for it was I used to sit in front of my laptop and I'd end up being kind of hunched over and then I get a backache. And I bought this and it lifts it up so that when you're typing, you're not kind of looking down and it doesn't give you any neck pain. But it transpires, it's really quite good for video calls because again, you're looking up as opposed to looking down with double chin going on and things like that. Those three things work really well. Background, lighting, natural light ideally, and positioning of your head, slightly look, I'm not talking about get on a video call and be like that, but just have the camera really slightly so that the person wouldn't even know, but you're ever so slightly looking upwards.